So to pick up where we left off, we talked about this idea of a Taylor polynomial. I wanna review the formula just to make sure you've got it. Remember a Taylor polynomial, P sub N of X can be built by F of C, F prime of C, X minus C, F double prime of C, X minus C to the second power over two factorial plus F triple prime of C, X minus C to the third power over three factorial. And because this is a polynomial, it is finite, finite. So this is gonna keep going all the way until we get to whatever the specified power of N is. So your last term will be the nth derivative at C, X minus C to the nth power over n factorial. And remember that polynomials are finite, meaning they don't have a plus dot, 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 and this is the last term. So these were called Taylor polynomials, and they could be centered anywhere at some value of c. But then Mr. McLaurin came in, and he decided that he was going to center things at zero, and he built the exact same formula, but this time centered at c. So the only difference is now, everywhere where I see C will be a zero, so F of zero. F prime of zero times X plus F double prime of zero times X squared over two factorial plus F triple prime of zero times X cubed over three factorial, and this polynomial will continue on until I get to the very last term, the nth term of that polynomial, where I will have the nth derivative at zero times x to the nth power over n factorial. To be honest with you, I memorized this formula because I feel like it is the same formula and I can apply it to anything. So what I wanna do um, with you right now is go through a couple of AP style questions that you're going to encounter um, along the way and discuss um, what those are going to look like. Um, I actually just filled in the wrong boxes, but it's on the same page. Here we go, there we go. So you just filled in those, all right? So let's look at some AP style questions, all right? So at the right, we have a graph of some function f. And they've given us a second degree, and we call things second degree because the highest power is two for a polynomial centered at x equals zero. It's asking me to find the signs of a, b, and c, okay? So what I would tell you to do is we're gonna actually take this polynomial, p sub two of x, and I'm going to stack this on top of my formula for a second degree polynomial centered at zero, which would be f of zero plus f prime of zero times x plus f double prime of zero x squared over two factorial. And we're gonna use this to compare. So the first thing I can see automatically is that f of zero must be equal to a. And if I look at my graph, I can see that a is the y-intercept and it appears to be a positive value, so a must be positive because the y-intercept is positive. And I can again make some comparisons because here I see bx and f prime of zero x. So if that's true, then b must be f prime of zero. And remember that f prime of zero is slope. And I can look at my graph over here and tell that the slope is in fact positive. So that means B must be a positive quantity. And last but not least, I can do the same thing, but I'll, be, I'll caution you to be very, very careful here. I see CX squared and I see this thing right here and you need to know that that means that C must be equal to F prime of zero over two factorial, which means that F prime of zero must be equal to two C. And since F double prime of zero is concavity. I can tell from my graph that it is concave down. So therefore, F double prime of zero must be negative and C must be a negative quantity, okay? 
So let's take this one step further and do some more equating of coefficients. So in our next problem, we have been given the following polynomial. Okay. And I have been asked to find f of 4, f prime of 4, f double prime of 4, and f triple prime of 4. Now, immediately, I need for you to realize that this is centered at 4. How do I know that? Because my polynomial has x minus 4 in it. Okay, so I can see the center. I think it is fortuitous and not fortuitous, advantageous for you to stack the formula on top of the problem. So if this is centered at 4, this should be f of 4. F, f prime of 4 times x minus 4. F double prime of 4 times x minus 4 squared over 2 factorial and f triple prime of 4 times x minus 4 cubed over 3 factorial. So this is an AP style problem where we're literally going to use these two things stacked on top of each other to compare my coefficients. So almost instantaneously, I can see that f of 4 must be equal to 2, okay? because those two coefficients are equal to each other. There's two constants are equal to each other. The next thing I can see is I go to this f prime of 4, x minus 4, and I go, oh gosh, there is no x minus 4 if in a power of 1 there. So if there's no x minus 4 to a power of 1, then what must f prime of 4 be equal to? Well, it's going to have to be 0, because that is the only way that this term could be missing from this polynomial, because it's not there. So then I'm gonna go to the next term, and I see that f double prime of four over two factorial must be equal to this. So I can actually set up an equation. I can say negative five times x minus four squared must be equal to f double prime of four times x minus 4 squared over 2 factorial. So I'm going to grab my x minus 4s and go ahead and get rid of them because I'm not interested in finding those. I want to get f double prime of 4 by itself. So that means it's negative 4 times 2 factorial, which is equal to negative 10. And then last but not least, I'm going to grab this term and set it equal to this term because they have the same exponents. So I know that f triple prime of 4 times x minus 4 to the third power over 3 factorial must be equal to 8 times x minus 4 to the third. I'm going to grab my yellow. I'm going to cross through these x minus 4s to the third power and we're going to isolate the f triple prime of 4 and we get 8 times 3 factorial which means f triple prime of 4 must be 48. So this is an AP problem where literally you're going to equate coefficients to coefficients. But I want you to be careful because it is easy to forget the factorials. So you have to be careful that you don't forget these factorials. When I talk about the factorials, I'm talking about the fact that there was a divided by 2 factorial and a divided by 3 factorial that we had to multiply over to find these values. It is so simple that students will often go, oh, well, that means f triple prime must be 8, and it's not 8. It happens to be 48. I can follow up with this question by now saying, does f have a local max or local min or neither at x equals 4? Well, that's just your second derivative test. We already know that f prime of 4 is 0. We know that f double prime of 4 is negative 10. So I have a concave down slope of 0 must mean that x equals 4 has a relative max by your second derivative test. So for our last problem, we're going to look at a kind of a unique interesting AP problem. 
Part A of this AP problem asks us to write a third degree Taylor polynomial centered at three. So to start off with, I wanna write, a, write my formula for a third degree polynomial centered at three. Our first term will be f of three. Our second term will be f prime of three times x minus three. Our next term will be f double prime of three times x minus three squared over two factorial. And because it told me it was a third degree, I know I need to stop at a power of three. So we're gonna have f triple prime of three, x minus three to the third power over three factorial. So now let's use the problem to fill in the pieces. f of three is negative four, f prime of three was given to us as two, f double prime of three is seven, but I have to keep my x minus three squared over two, and then f triple prime of three was negative five, x minus three cubed over three factorial. So I've satisfied the first part of the question. Okay, guys, give me two minutes if you need me, okay? All right, the next part of the question is actually kind of interesting, and this is something that is challenging on the AP test. So it says, I wanna now write a fourth degree polynomial for g of x, and g of x is gonna be equal to f of x squared plus three. So you already built this polynomial. This polynomial is an approximation for f. Now I want you to build a polynomial for f of x squared plus three. In algebra two, we knew that a plus three meant that you were going to the left three. Our previous polynomial was centered at three. I knew that because that's where we built it at. But this guy is wanting us to build it at zero. Well, that's good because if I am at three and I go left three, I end up at x equals zero. And so what we would say is our shifts match and that's super important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this polynomial right here and everywhere I see an x, we're going to plug in x squared plus three for x and watch what happens. So now I'm gonna write a polynomial that's going to approximate g. Keep my negative four, I'm gonna keep my two, and instead of x, I'm gonna write x squared plus three minus three. I'm gonna have my seven, I'll have my two, and instead of x, I'm gonna say x squared plus three, and then there's still a minus three. And then for my last term, negative five over three factorial. And instead of x, I'm gonna write x squared plus three, and here's what's really nice. So my threes end up going away. Okay, thank you. And so with a little bit of algebra, I can see negative four, plus two x squared, plus seven halves. This is gonna end up as x to the fourth because we're going to square a power of two. And then I have minus five over three, x to the sixth, and it's gonna be x to the sixth because I'm going to cube a power of two. And I've now written a polynomial that's centered at zero. How do I know it's centered at zero? Because all of my x's don't have any minus anything, it's just x. It does say that it wants it to be a fourth degree, and so you don't get extra credit for doing extra terms, so we don't need this guy, and that would be our answer. We have our fourth degree polynomial. That's where I'm gonna stop. We'll pick up there next class.